Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I command this spirit to live now. I decree, my God, what is this that I'm seeing? Let them go now. Release them now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and I declare, overflow one, there is a miracle coming for someone. I cast that spirit now. Let them go now. Release them. This is the place of God's power. I challenge you, my God. I'm seeing dark clouds rising from people. Release them now. I bring to end every captivity. I'm seeing names written on the ground. Names written on the ground. This is a symbol of bondage. I release such people now. We are teaching, but let me minister for two, three minutes based on what I'm seeing. I cast those demons right now. Release God's people right now. Now, in the name of Jesus, I'm ministering to specific people. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing something like shadow coming on people and making them feel dizzy. This is an attack. I command that spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let them go now, everywhere within this auditorium. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This may not be to everyone. But that's why this place is called Koinonia. God is not only ministering to us, he's visiting people. Are we together? Hey. cannot hear you when they are oppressed I'm seeing chains on people's hands and I'm seeing the number 15 in the name of Jesus I declare upon these 15 people wherever you are by the fire of the Holy Ghost I break those chains now please help them just help those under the anointing I command those chains be broken now I command those chains hear the word of the Lord be broken now be broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated if you can. The Lord desires that we continue to be spiritual men. And one of the indices of true spirituality is discernment. The ability to tap 
into the impulses of the realm of the spirit and to understand supernatural angelic activities and also demonic activities and then by the power of decree to set at liberty them that are bound you'll be surprised that this revelation God showed me may just be for one person for just two people but then it is worth it for that one person this is why he or she came for koinonia there's a lady in overflow three overflow three the Lord is showing me a lady in overflow three I'm seeing something that looks like a crown but that's not a crown of royalty it's a symbol of bondage I take it off right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I take it off right now by the power of the Holy Ghost we'll get to the word shortly this is koinonia so just just allow me to do the things that I'm doing please bring the person that shouts under the anointing outside overflow one I'm seeing fire and it's coming on someone right now and the Lord wants me to prophesy over that person is bringing restoration my dear to your family and light is touching someone from here to this place this row as I'm seeing the same thing God is doing on this lady God is doing to someone on that row in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy restoration I don't care what the limits are we place the word of God upon your situation and I declare supernatural restoration supernatural restoration in the name of Jesus the Lord is driving away the spirit of death over three families hold on please three families I'm hearing in the spirit three families in the name of Jesus wherever they are you are representing that family I declare the spirit of death hell the grave we curse you by the power of the highest we we set at liberty right now these families we extend their lives in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we're going to be seated shortly you see listen as a minister of the gospel your assignment is not just to come and teach your assignment is also to be sensitive to the things that God wants to communicate are we together now God is bringing someone at overflow 2 to the realm of the prophetic overflow 2 by the roadside I'm seeing a grace there is an anointing that is bringing someone into that experience of the prophetic so that you will begin to hear and you will begin to see not like you are hearing not like you are seeing It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, 
I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Just one last prayer and then we're seated. I'm seeing the grace for speed and restoration. That anointing is coming on at least 21 people. I stretch my hands now. Speed. That grace. That anointing. Lord, all those who must enter these dimensions in this season, I activate that grace. Speed. Doesn't matter what you have lost. Doesn't matter what has left you. I release that grace. Speed. Speed. Kabarakatosabaredashia. Speed, I prophesy, I declare as one sent from the Almighty. Speed to your life. The families that you are representing, I command speed. How forcible are right words. I declare the force of prophecy. Speed. You will marvel at the things that begin to happen. I declare by the God of Jeshurun. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated if you can. Let's just take two minutes to just pray in the spirit while you are seated. The various ministrations of the spirit. That's why you came. The spirit of God is still blessing people. Just do what I ask you to do. Just sit while you are praying the Spirit. You are receiving something. Your year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I empower you. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I empower you. I empower you. Shamarakatos kalabarikata, negate preskata likatos zasi anahasabrakatosia. It will be like a dream. You are being lifted by the hand of the Almighty. There is a force that is lifting you beyond the limitations of men. There is a force that is lifting your family. You came for koinonia. I speak it in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. the lord is still telling me he's bringing speed i'm doing a quick walk a quick walk a quick walk that's what the holy ghost is telling me a quick walk this is the season of the quick walk i'm doing a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release that grace upon this house. The grace that makes things happen fast. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we receive it. We declare a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
He says, For he that cometh to God must believe first that he exists. You are not coming to meet an idol. Number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, koinonia is not just a teaching ministry. It's not just where you come to learn. There is a spiritual impartation. You are immersed in a reality and you step out of it with an evidence that no power no force, no devil can contest or deny. It's reality. These are not shadows. You will watch in wonder as you begin to see the testimonies that unfold just from the experiences. You see, God visits you through his word he visits you through his power. Leave the realm of argument where you come and you are wondering, can God touch me? Can God bless me? No, it's a deposit of his grace. This place is a portal. It's an access point to the throne. God made it so by his grace. And that if you are humble enough to believe and receive, just one encounter is enough. You don't need to come twice. One and is impossible to leave this place tonight and not return with a testimony no no listen if this is your first time coming here i'm telling you it's impossible you will never have to come twice to have a test it doesn't matter you are under a system that is bound by a covenant this is not just something about a man's intention <laughs> hallelujah lord jesus we thank you for what you have done tonight we declare that forever jesus will be lifted in this place lord more than a man may your people see jesus may they see christ lifted and glorified Tonight, change our lives by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus. Please just sit down, everyone. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. This is not for everybody. There are specific people that this prophetic word is joy, 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 joy. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Mighty God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Just help those under the anointing. And um, let us get to the word. These are the various ways and systems in the kingdom by which God lifts men more than the communications of men this is a spirit communication that god invades your spirit man and deposits something upon you you see god just within these few minutes has distributed so many things so many things activating gifts dimensions bringing people into realms and levels most times you may not understand what you have received until you step out of this place and then you will see possibilities activated and you will know that this one was by the finger of god 
Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. Let's get to the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is bringing restoration to someone among the ushers. I just saw this now in a flash. One of the ushers, the Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration by the Spirit. And God is saying it will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1. I don't know who this is for but the Lord is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word still stands what I told you must come to pass the way I said it the Lord is saying I should tell somebody my word still stands no matter what you have seen this is a prophetic word for someone and I speak by the Spirit God is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word my word still stands no matter what you have seen my word still stands i've spoken once i will not speak again my word still stands my word still stands Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. Please sit down. I want you to be very sensitive to what God is doing. This is not just people shouting carelessly or falling under the anointing. No, this is God birthing definite things in the lives of people birthing very definite things things you can see things you can relate with you will know and you can know that this one was by the hand of god second peter chapter one we start from verse two we're reading the first three verses after from verse two just help those under the anointing grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ the next verse says according as his divine power hath given us all things ah, fire is burning in this house I tell you fire is burning in this house 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 all that i'm seeing in the spirit is fire just fire fire don't mind my madness just allow me to do this thing i'm just seeing fire that's what i'm seeing fire You know when these things start no matter how you try to concentrate sometimes you just continue to see um, there's a young man here you are in ministry the Lord is telling me that you are entering the realm of the miraculous right now the dimension of strange miracles God has been dealing with you for months you have been having encounters 
It's even part of the reasons why you came here. And God is saying you are stepping into a strange dimension of miracles. Kabaruzi Kataria. Wherever they are in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the grace and the unction that brings men into dimensions of the miraculous. You will know you have come to receive something solid. You will go back to your ministry and in the name of Jesus, you will see the hand of God in unusual ways. Let the sick be healed under your hand. Let lives, let testimonies, let testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. It's like a well of fire from within your spirit. Opening up a well of fire from within your spirit. I shift you to a level of miracles, a level of signs and wonders. hallelujah you know sometimes god just interrupts the service to minister to his people and it's important to be sensitive because sometimes this five ten minutes of ministration i know that next week is a miracle service but sometimes you always will not have to wait for the miracle service there are people whose situations are a matter of life and death so it's, it's God bringing people into that realm. It's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, entirely by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So he introduces levels, realities into your life. These are the dimensions that no man can gainsay nor resist. Please sit down. Let's see if we can make progress. We have a lot to do. Our retreat starts tomorrow and Sunday. Maybe this will be the last one and then we'll trust God for grace. This lady, Kende, the Lord is bringing I'm seeing a fire that is coming upon her and the Lord is saying he's burning everything that has been deposited into her body this is sickness sickness but in the name of Jesus I command that spirit to give way right now anyone sick here if there is anything sickness I sense a healing anointing right now sickness be healed be healed now be healed please help them be healed anything that has entered your body every deposit to manifest as sickness be healed i bring you the life and the power of jesus be healed it goes once and for all uncontrolled flow of blood goes now uncontrolled flow of blood it goes now once and for all it leaves your life forever in the name of jesus christ the Lord is healing a breast lump. I decree and declare that lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. The Lord is breaking a circle of joblessness in a family. All of you in that family, there's not one person that has a job. But I'm seeing like a sword coming right now. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that family is. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, your season for testimony, your season for testimony, I break that circle right now. In the name of Jesus, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. I release that family. Enter your realm of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Let's continue. 
second peter chapter 1 verse 3 now according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises what did he give us exceeding great and precious promises so how did he make us partake us through the promises he left promises that when we access and walk in that reality we will be partakers of that divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss bless your word tonight and in the name of jesus we pray that you will increase us amen and amen last week i started teaching on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth i'll be teaching along that lines not exactly the same thing but then I want us to listen very carefully because for many people the subject of the blessings of God divine supplies wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people those who do not love God and those who don't want to grow spiritually but that is not true I took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men remember my teaching yes and that there will always be a demand by satan to give your soul in exchange for material things so it's not just that your soul listen carefully it's not just that your soul is given to the devil but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies and i gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together when your pocket begins to rise he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down are we together and that has been the system so people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money but in the name of jesus there is a generation of men and women rising by the spirit of god who will prosper even as their souls prosper Amen. and so i told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of tyre satan himself sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth and we're going to look at the second aspect today and I'm just going to talk to you two words basically that we'll be teaching um, along those lines and then God will grant us grace Genesis chapter 1 please Genesis chapter 1 when God made man he gave a command and the first word that man heard from God according to verse 28 and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful everybody say it after me be fruitful number two multiply number three replenish the earth number four subdue it that these four dimensions is what makes for dominion that for the saints to at any point command dominion all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences you must have the ability to be fruitful you must have the ability to multiply you must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue i'm not talking about all of those dimensions i just want to connect something i did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful please you need to get it it's very very important because i want to start building from there god is a god of increase god is a god that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful and um when 
the Lord mandated man to be fruitful. Please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, the womb, or what you call fruitfulness, children. The womb. When God told man be fruitful, he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery, and by so doing, multiply the earth. Number two, the mind be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful number three your hands be fruitful your hands must also be fruitful number four be fruitful your mouth your lips must also be fruitful just follow me carefully and then lastly your spirit so when god spoke to man and said be fruitful he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman. He was speaking to all of these dimensions of man. That the womb be fruitful. The mind be fruitful. The hands be fruitful. The mouth be fruitful. The spirit be fruitful. Are we together? The fruit of the womb is the child. The fruit of the mind is is ideas and creativity please write when the womb gives birth you call the child or you call the fruit a child when the mind or your thoughts give birth you call the fruit ideas when the hands give birth you call the child work or accomplishments when the mouth gives birth you call it words when the spirit gives birth you call it character and so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer if you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agree that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together <clears throat> we rounded up in the last meeting with the daniel where Daniel and the three Hebrew boys came and said, Oh king, we will not bow. We know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol, but we have made up our minds that our God is able to deliver us. Are we together? And so it is possible that we conquer these spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints and i want to just guide you very briefly tonight i'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity the power of productivity this is a very scarce teaching in the body of Christ and even in Africa the power of productivity submitting to the government of Christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of Christ to the saints there is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is the name of that weapon is productivity say productivity 
Please write this down. There is a difference between value and productivity. There is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity. Value talks of your inherent abilities. Value talks of your potentials. Value talks of your transactable skills. That means that everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value. But productivity is more than value. Are we together now? Just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded. The world is full of many valuable people. But in the face of economic hardship, even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need. Are we together now? It is important to be aware of value, but just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints. Please write this down. Productivity is the quality or the ability to create, make, or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. I'll take it again. Productivity is the quality or ability to create, make, or enhance products and services that are needed and useful. Never forget this, this definition. That productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful. Look up please everyone. While value talks of your inherent abilities, productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful. It is not valuable people who are rewarded. It is productive people. Are we together? Please, you may write this down. Financial resources will always follow productivity, not necessarily value. Financial resources will always move the direction of productivity. Productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance. The ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity. Hmm. So God has a system for our prosperity. He's a God of increase. In spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains, Satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack, into poverty, and by so doing, distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom. And I'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory, economic victory, is productivity. Any man, any woman, any church, any organization that is not productive will be poor. It's a law. Please listen carefully. Any man, any woman, any church, any business, any organization that fails to be productive, there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality.
before I discuss a few things and a few ways that God can help us to be productive, let me destroy what I call the consumer mentality. Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies and you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation. It is sin. Everything God gives men, he expects that they increase. In the parable of the talent, Matthew chapter 25, the Bible talks about three men who were given talents. One, five talent, listen carefully. The other two talents and then the last a talent. And the Bible says the one with the five went and made five more, increased. The other one with two went and made two more. But the one with one talent returned back and said, you are a hard man. You reap where you didn't sow. And Jesus called him a name. He didn't call him lazy man. He said, you are a wicked and unprofitable. That's the word, unprofitable. There is no gain trusting you. Wicked and unprofitable servant. Africa has been plagued and sadly, respectfully so, but sadly, our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality. Are we together now? So the, the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average African and worst of it all to an average believer. The subject of productivity is not taught believers. We, we have been trained to ignore productivity. Let me tell you, I think the worst scam is to expect life to give to you something. The Bible says give and it will be given to you. That's the law. It didn't say what you give is what must be given. But until you give, nothing should be given back to you. So if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you. It's amazing, my brothers and my sisters, how many of us, many of us even seated here, just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs. Just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Productivity. So the average person thinks consumption. Give me, let me eat, it has finished. Give me another one. Let me eat. It has finished. Daddy, give me this. It has finished. Productivity. We lack this grossly in Africa. Are we together now? Yeah. So people collect their salaries. And when they collect their salaries, the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months, they are back because there was no productivity. There was money, but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be finance, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, 
you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality. Great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence, you become a multiplier factor. Are we together? So your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you, something happens in that family and begins to multiply. The greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture. Amazing how you can take a seed. Look up everybody. You plant that seed. Are we together now? And then you watch it. That orange seed, just give it a little time. It grows. The orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough. Are you seeing that now? Yes. In spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds, it has the stamina. And a few months after maturity, you begin to see oranges everywhere. Watch this. You will pluck the oranges. And after a while, it will start again. And you will pluck some more. And there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people. The trees were there before they were born, yet they will still eat of it. That's productivity. Are we together now? No man who is productive becomes poor. No matter what Babylon wants to do or not. No matter what devil. No matter what charm, what cause. Productivity is not an idea for success. It's a weapon. Productivity is a weapon. A man of God who is productive will never have empty pews. A church, a ministry that is productive will never go down. A business that is productive will never see shame. The key is productivity. The key is not wishing. The key is not sentiments. The key is productivity. The ability to convert anything small to become big productivity. The ability to introduce a multiplier factor. I am productive. Who do I use? Come. I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness. That he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come will be ready for empty pews the days of solidarity based on tribe based on all this are over the determining factor for impact is productivity we come from the same village will soon be a joke we have the same auntie you are my elder brother i'm your younger brother no people are desperate he said that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills and the people will say let us flow although upwards but let us flow to that mountain are we together thank you what does productivity involve let's discuss this quickly Number one, the first key to productivity is healthy exposure. Write it down. The first key to productivity is exposure. Please, whether you are standing outside, whether what, if you can listen, listen. If you can write, write. What's the first key? It's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life to god whatever it is i was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman one testimony you were all laughing around when the guy was doing his best to articulate 
and piece together every spiritual intelligence. You, you, you can see the, don't feel bad, my friend, but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access. You can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual. But he said, I want to start from that kindergarten. Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. Productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. Listen to me. Exposure is not a gift of the spirit. In fact, exposure is not even a gift of life at all. Exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life, you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, not, that's why I said healthy exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive, the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding. He will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted. Listen to me. That's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for. God is breaking that cycle of limitation. There is no basis for receiving when you can. There are many people who cannot. God cannot even tell them certain things. It's not yet a concept that can be received. They don't have a system built within them to receive it. Please listen very carefully. Exposure. I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle belton, the average northerner, has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first. Because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure. 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 The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it, he would translate you to the realm of the spirit and say, still see in any case i need you to comprehend that's what he did to abraham he kept telling abraham you will be a father of many nations abraham said amen like we're saying and god said i can't work with you you are you are empowering delay in your life and then one time he said abraham come out you have checked around and there is nothing that looks like lift up your eyes see count the stars he had been looking at the stars but he never tried counting them I'm looking for something I can use to, to, to parallel what I want to do in your life. So count the stars. So he will start one, two, three, oh God. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, one, God is impossible. That's it. He says, so shall your seed be. I, I have I've planted something in you that you can now relate with. He says, and Abraham finally believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited. We came from a poor background. Now, I'm not insulting you, please. You are born to look like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Listen carefully. I understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise. 
but somewhere along your life you must make up your mind unfortunately many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way you just sit down and say this poverty i'm tired i must start hustling you have missed it again hmm. exposure so the young carpenter from galilee can anything good come out of nazareth and every time he went to pray his horizons were expanding you see what satan did to jesus he took him to an exceeding high mountain and said you have not seen this one at least not in the flesh he says look at it first let me expand your mind good marketer when he saw everything he said let me make this work easy it was only a temptation because of what jesus saw if jesus did not see anything it can be a temptation Are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight? Everybody say exposure. It is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like say Abuja or Lagos and all of that. Do you know why? Because the environment, sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking, is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity. So you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you. And then they tell you this is a young man that owns it. And subconsciously, your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say, Lord, there has to be something about my life. But in this environment, no matter what level you are, you are still a champion. You see how bad it is? Before or after school, you are still better than many people. Before or after being born again, you are better than many people. You waste your money. They say, no problem. You are better than us. There is nothing that challenges you. So you need a healthy exposure. There are people in their life who never bought cars. And the day you say, we are trusting God for a car, they look at you and say, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Must you live with a car? No, you mustn't, but it's better to have a car. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say, my dear, let me tell you what this is. Let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say, what is this? This is called this. This is called that. She doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home. And the mother says, sir, it's ready. Help me pour water on the firewood. Let, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rests. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted, but many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit, they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord, there's nothing you can, you just, you just think it says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters and when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something. That's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy a ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people the possibility that you see before you is what you become that's what jacob did to the animals he simulated what he wanted them to become are you getting what i'm saying now 
Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God. And you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience. I thought all wealthy people hate God. I thought all wealthy people are indisciplined crooks. Here I'm seeing a man that loves God. Then you have the opportunity to see his offering. You have the opportunity to see his tithe. You have the opportunity to see his prayer. And in it his righteousness endures. He will leave you with a mark. You will go back and say, Mama, I know we are in this hut, but there is a better life. Egypt, I know there is cocoon and there's carrots but there is Canaan my mother is Canaan let's trust God for grace and in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you may you be the one to lift your family out of this land. please sit down exposure exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart are we together you never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand because every time they paid your school fees you were the last you never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money it's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive that there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of god not luck Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what will discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us, our educational background is very poor till today. We are still fighting that warfare. Let me tell you where it started from. It started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to. You went to a school that you sat on stone. Now, I'm not insulting you. Are we together? Yes. A school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know. Because that's what is obtainable. Are we together? How you pass your JSC is now that you know it was mercy and favor because you were certainly not ready. Now, let me tell you, if you come from that kind of background, you will be surprised. The first thing you have to manage is complex, not assimilation. The moment you find yourself in the company of other people, their confidence will intimidate you. You will have to fail for a long time before you start building. Your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching. To manage your complex. Just a question they ask you. Stand up and you cannot say your name again. You don't fail because you are bad. You fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with. Exposure is powerful. Exposure is powerful. The same way you grew spiritually... Because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason 
you come from a polygamous family or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think his whole template was warfare and aggression? That was what he termed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the scene and it was terrible, especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight to fight between myself and my father. Everything was aggression. You bring cold water for him to wash his hand. He won't say you are wrong. He will slap you. You fall with the whole thing. Then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before. How did you manage that situation? Now please, don't you ever see my father. And my father is a born again loving man right now. He's a healthy and wonderful man. Are we together now? Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body. There's only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yeah. And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah, Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known, but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. 
you can remedy for your lack of exposure if it is costly to fly physically let your mind go there listen carefully the most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body it's your mind so when your body cannot get there don't feel bad find a way of taking your mind to that location and this is where the internet becomes a blessing you don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your, your, yourself, but your mind can go there. Remember, I've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere, your body must follow. It doesn't matter what the resistance is. Yes, you don't have the privilege to have been born in Lagos. You don't have the privilege to have been born in the US. You don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the Western worlds. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my village. The last time I checked, I didn't exactly see it there. That's not the issue. Your body may not be able to go there, but God has orchestrated such that your mind can go there. Everybody around you was a bad father, a wicked man, a bad mother, a wicked woman, and God can just lead you to one 15-minute video on YouTube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies. Everybody say exposure. There's no excuse in our world today for remaining small, even financially. There is a system of exposure. There is a system of exposure. There is a system of exposure. Are we together? Number two, thank you. The second key to productivity, please write it down, is creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation. The second key to productivity. Remember I told you productivity is a weapon. You don't just fight by prayer alone. You don't just fight by fasting alone. Your productivity is a weapon. As God is exposing you and exposing your mind, you are fighting a warfare that you do not know. It's a warfare for your destiny. While you are exposing yourself, you are exposing it for your children, for your children's children. And then number two, creativity. Write this down. What is creativity? Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, imaginations, and dreams into reality. Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, your imaginations, and your dreams into reality. I saw this definition and it was so instructive. It also involves the act of turning your, um, transforming your ideas, imagination, dreams into reality. Full stop. It also involves perceiving the world in new ways, comma, finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. It involves perceiving the world in new ways, finding hidden patterns, making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Look up, please. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu abohu, confusion and chaos. And the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters because creation, recreation was about to start. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit was as a creative spirit. And listen to me. If you will conquer the king of Tyre, and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of God, then you must be creative. The spirit of invention, the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit. Please hear me. Any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators. There is no reason for competition again. Creation is the key. 
the ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit please give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the Bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or imagine the word there is imagine it says according to the power that worketh in us creativity unfortunately our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep our creativity level in this generation is almost zero thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school quantitative reasoning and uh, what's the other one verbal reasoning this our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind I, I'm not being insulted but you ask a graduate a simple question just something he can think about I mean it's not there at all creativity is zero zero so we like doing things the way everybody has done you just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures change five to seven change this to and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it creativity is zero many businesses that's why when a business is wrong many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think they just copy you must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of a magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let, let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, Every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah. Telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new, you go, they apply for a job looking for 80 people. And about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry. But there is a way. There is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The the employment in any nation is private sector driven there is no nation that the government handles their employment no government has only limited parastatal are you getting what i'm saying now and because they are working on cutting costs usually they will make sure that as much as possible they cut costs 
the employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ five people and five computers. 737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people one of their most successful products but with that many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient every businessman does business for profits i hope you know bank is business bank is not government property is somebody's business look at graduates now all around there is nothing because there is a system and please listen to what i'm saying because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us read ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you and while that is happening satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high it's a double-edged sword so that whatever direction you come from you will be attacked listen the average salary within this system is not more than 20 to 30 thousand listen carefully am i telling the truth there are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is 20 to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know no matter how careful you are in this life, 20 to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and it's more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000 and everybody saying, oh yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry. <laughs> Watch this. Where will you get the resources to marry? I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry? You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing, can, remember you are born again. Remember you are filled with the spirit of God. And Satan says exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithe. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity. Listen to me. Creativity and innovation. There is a spirit in man. 
my brothers and sisters, there is a spirit in man. There are men and women that must arise. Let us not pray in tongues for nothing. We are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground. The world does not understand that language. The language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee, his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions, uncommon manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this, and I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue I told them I said I don't have this time and they gave me time 8 30 I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me I sat down and did BVN is there anything sir would you are you happy would you like a drink I said ah look at how unfair life can be listen to me this is not some boasting or bragging I want you to be apostolic in your understanding this is not about money at all this is about your soul and the gospel are we together now yes. let us not keep our children in captivity my brothers and my sisters standing between your parents and your children is you we are that bridge you can transfer what you received or you can say Lord let me be the one to suffer it let my child not go through what I've gone through again and God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be this is this is where sincerely speaking i have a little challenge with we men of god we continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them is wickedness is a scam do you know how available people will be when they are financially free financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. 
Yahweh, Yahweh. Creativity, 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 that God will anoint people to be creative, do new things or old things in new ways, that you set a pace. My brothers and my sisters, let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria. No, it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller. But there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we used the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen, the instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it. That the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the, way, the, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood and I looked. I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen to people. Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the pain? When you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Gino says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child in the name of Jesus. No, no, I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel, at the expense of the truth. But this will be a blind, foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity. Listen very carefully. God is teaching us something tonight that will save us. Exposure. Creativity. The mind that thinks. The mind that works. Spirit inspired mind. The mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. Bet solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon. Of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now. 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extra moral lesson. It's a VIP extra moral lesson. And it started like two children. 
three children, right in her house. And those students were behaving exceptionally well. But more than that, she was teaching them character. Character. And then she would play koinonia messages too. These children were changing in remarkable ways. And the parents started recommending their circle of influence. That's always what happens when you penetrate one circle. They will call the others like them to you. And like play, like play, this woman would collect 10,000 naira per month. As at the time that I was talking with her, she had like 50 children. Only God knows how much she has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and it's the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind, something on your mind and change your life change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. The person's clothes, they wrote $400. Then his, his tie, they wrote $20. And then his head, they wrote $0. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything. up. It's not only power to shake. No. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your heart on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakatoske Parakata from heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I'll have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray, please pray. Sabra Nekatalakotosasiata. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you, you will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 
Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? Kings. Kings. That God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman. True story. And I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing he saw a mowing machine. Machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And say, sir, I'm a young man. I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have um, any, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine, I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed and said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers flowers they to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one and something comes from heaven and changes your life for as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better my brothers and my sisters let me tell you you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age. Are we together? I know a woman, a dear precious woman in Lagos. Every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry, I'm very quick to order her, her products, health drinks, completely organic 100 percent, because the need to live long and live healthy you see when you are poor is not a concern because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this but by the time god helps you small you find out that at a level is a serious concern and this this woman started selling health drinks and you know beautifully packaged and only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents let them take it and let them be blessed the goal is not far from you when the spirit of creativity comes on you you will see what others don't see it's true anything can bless it depends on how it is served are we together there's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local, you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it. Even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness rebuke excuses there has to be a way out of it the warfare that is executed through creativity only creative men can survive upon that mountain there is a way out there is a way out there has to be a way out of struggling hallelujah Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity.
creativity. The third key to productivity, one is exposure, two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive, the third key is competence. The ability to standardize your results. Hmm. Competence. The ability to standardize your results, maintain quality, predictable quality. Predictable quality. Anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation. I know if you are a lesson teacher, I already know what a child will get because you are there. If you are a chef, I already know. The food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow. You are not competent. Competent is a product of mastery. The mastery of the laws that govern that operation. Predictable competence. Listen to me. When your results are not standardized, kings will not come to you. Kings do not come to a fluctuated result. Stability for kings mean mastery. So when you stabilize and standardize your results, whether spiritually, intellectually, or otherwise, you call the attention of kings. The leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results. You cannot keep fluctuating forever. As a man of God, as a businessman, as a career person, there must be a level of standardized results. Everybody say competence. Mm. Be strict on yourself. Set a high standard on yourself. Don't celebrate mediocrity. Just because you do something small, challenge yourself. Think global, think global, think global. You can start small, but let your mind be global. Are we together? I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention, then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today, is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's clothes today. You walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually, but insist, insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you. When you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he cursed it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria.
come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same because the message is powerful and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you and they are noticing the fluctuations around your result. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth and my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man a very very big and wealthy man and then he was encouraged to do a good job and I'm sure he may be listening now and when he sewed the clothes for that man from that time that man started calling him. Now he asked him, I heard recently again, to make another set of clothes. Let me tell you, competence is addictive. When people meet competent people, they don't easily let them go. No, there are not many competent people in the world. You can only complain for a while, you will come back. Be so competent that you become an endangered species. I remember years ago, a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a, uh, what they call these people that, makeup artist from Kano. And I asked a question. I said, does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day? The wedding day is not the day of trial and error. If you are not competent, provable competence, kings and queens will not call you listen when you become competent you can name your price and the world will still say thank you is god blessing you competence you need to shake off poverty don't just sit down and say oh god um, now that the job is not coming or what i read no god is giving you a mind that can sit down listen koinonia I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced and that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life is changed do to me what you want listen some of us our parents may have failed but turn them into a success by being successful so that they can say my assignment was to give birth to you and since i gave birth to you i may have failed in every other thing but because you arrived successfully your success has turned me back to a success The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he became 
he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names and coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a cause. Being in the north is not a cause. Being a Nigerian is not a cause. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly by the Spirit of God, say, Apostle, look, we are writing this. Let this not be an issue. Not moral support. No. That people like here who will be so blessed and sign a million Bibles and say, please take them to the Northeast. Noiseless impact. Are we together now? There are many of our children in this ministry some of them you see them come and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall, but because I came. Ah, I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. You know your impact by what people do around your birthdays. That you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed. People should be excited and know that my God, this blessing to my life, what an opportunity to celebrate him. There are people today, you still look at their grave and their grave is a sermon. You can stand on their grave and live inspired. He came, he saw, he conquered. Productivity. The ability to trust God for an innovative spirit. Listen, turn your ideas to products and services. So you are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services. Served with excellence until they become products and services, you are only worthy of commendation, not reward. I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey, that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen. One of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge yourself. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, Give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. 
to HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. Hmm. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I said, I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing and then kings will come to you and say our money means nothing in the face of this situation and you tell them there is a system in this kingdom that can help men the little grace that God has given me I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people when people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me I'm excited I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony if that does not happen to you what kind of man of God do you want to become when you become a conventional man of God you will be a competitive man of God a jealous man of God an angry man of God and eventually a backsliding man of God but there is a height, an exceeding high mountain where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny you may not have been born with that privilege but my brother and my sister let me tell you this there are men and women who did not have any advantage but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves that out of Zaria God will spring forth something that will shift this nation men and women who defy unemployment men and women who defy mediocrity and your productivity will open the gates and the king of Tyre will watch you and you will pass and sit on that mountain and call for nations to come and they will come listen to me we are going to have a few minutes to pray and just where you are, I'd like you to pray. Are we together now? Worship team, just give us, just play something for us. And then you pray. You are going to cry for your destiny. Tonight's prayer, you are not interceding for anybody. You are saying, Lord, there has to be something uncommon in my life. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of having what everybody has. It is the reason for jealousy. It is the reason for envy. Lord, put something upon my life. Something uncommon. Are you ready to pray? Expose my mind. Grant me the grace to be creative. Grant me the grace to be competent.
The endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of sons. No excuse for poverty, no excuse for failure, no excuse for mediocrity. Lord, I cancel those excuses tonight. I cancel those excuses. I cancel those excuses. I have a mind that thinks, I have a spirit that can think. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty can make men of understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cause the spirit of laziness. Laziness. Physical laziness. Mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Those following online, pray. He see shall be mighty upon earth his seed shall be mighty upon earth alabarandas kabaraka to shebre deketas lekete parusa segete marakata embrakata barato soto preketesh sabrende segete leva karyada vos Rakata baba kata paranta sada baka tosh. Embrakete nekete parato sade kete. Rekete kete kete balada bosh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. So it is true that the spirit of poverty can be around this man's business, this man's life, and so on and so forth. I'm just using this as an example. Now, after I take authority over that spirit, the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place, a place of habitation. Not finding any, the spirit will advise itself, I will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house. He's still calling the man. That means... You remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free. It finds the house swept, clean, but empty. And then the Bible says it gathers seven others. Jesus is teaching here now. That means this is how the realm of the spirit works. And returns back to that man so that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former. And because of his ignorance, he will say the man of God is fake. The man of God is not fake. You are not transformed to sustain the miracle. Are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from? At least you, were in a, you, you, you had a house. After the breakthrough, now you don't even have a house again. And you say, ah, I don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works in this church or in this ministry or somewhere no 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 not at all not at all but now imagine with me that god steps in over dr emeka's life are we together and then the lord blesses him still using the finance that that, that i'm giving an illustration around and this guy now god blesses him and he decides to say now that at least one million has come my destiny is bigger than one million but one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent are we together and just sort out my children now i can even if i can't pay everything i can pay first them i can rest while he's doing that he now subjects himself and said do you know what i want to find out god's ways 
the ways are located for the prosperity of the saints and he begins to gather these teachings while he's listening do you know what he's doing he's closing the door this guy is prospering not when he's doing business when he is fortifying his mindset so that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again to preach deliverance to the captives many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house now I'm, I'm not being sarcastic i would not do that from church to church from apostle to apostle prophet to prophet pastor to pastor in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring are we together now yes we will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong notice no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy he loses it through ignorance prophecy brings it ignorance when the devil marks that you have this stronghold he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming this is how satan mocks many men of god across africa before they pray the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back he studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold the door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open. And the spirit says, I can stroll around. The service will soon finish. And I will route through just one door of ignorance. And I'm back to the life, back to the business. Are we together? Very, very powerful. So this gentleman, as he's transformed, something is happening to him. You will find out prophecy. Now You will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance as you would call it it will show in his transformation so he can return and say 10 years ago watch this once upon a time i was poor or i was weak or i was under all kinds of yokes and all of that then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of god comma and then I subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of God and the Holy Ghost. The more I expanded my spiritual capacity, the more his potential, the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me. Now look at my life. I'm a testimony from here to here. I never want this place to just become a place of miracles. There's a service, so let's go. You'll be healed. You'll be blessed. I agree. But I, I disagree that you'll be sustainably blessed, sustainably healed, sustainably lifted, except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight, you must contend for knowledge. This kingdom is knowledge-based. And not any kind of knowledge. You are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear. No, there is a body of truth already allocated. You are not given the luxury of inventing what you want. It may not be comfortable to your, your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you. Listen, you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of God, not the one that looks pleasant to you doctrinally speaking if you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory to walk in the fullness of the victorious life then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying, I don't like this one. I like this one. Now, you already know that this guy is in trouble. There is a reason why he's taught that, as uncomfortable as this. You have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say, I, I may not like it. It doesn't, I mean, who would want to touch a cadaver? Who would want to walk with a dead body? Who would want to keep giving people injections all around? I mean, these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things. Who would want to do that? But you have to do it. That's the only way the, uh, what the what's inside that? The um, drug will get into your body. There's no Bluetooth for it. It has to go directly. <laughs> Are we together? 
So, this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection. You have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort. And you endure the thing and receive it for a few days and after that, you are fine. This is it. It's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe, that means that, um, by, let me explain what I mean. The believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results. Isn't it funny? That believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say, no, 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 no. Um, I don't like this. I like this. I don't like this. It's pride. The Bible says when you are ready to receive, there is a quality that is required. It's called meekness. That you receive with meekness the engrafted word. You must embrace the whole counsel of God to experience all of God. Are we learning? What I'm sharing with you is very powerful. This is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have. You know, Africa, we like prayer. And prayer is good. But visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy, flattery in religion, and will never produce results. The value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept. Prayer does not just work generically, regardless of your obeying other principles. It's why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer, God must be answering. Spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of God. If you choose a dimension and leave the rest. So we have people who are always praying, always delivering something, always casting out demons. Now, please, I, I, I don't say it with, with, a, with a heart of sarcasm at all. Don't, don't find offense in any way. This way, you will never become a portrait of the victory of Christ. It will never truly happen. It was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever. What then is the excellency of the finished work of Christ? Then on the other hand, we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free. Oh boy. And their lives continue to show that this is not correct. When they are sick, they don't say Christ paid for my sickness. They go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right. The possibility of sickness, the possibility of defeat, no matter how temporal, is already a clue that victory is established in Christ from the prophetic standpoint. But it takes your engaging with God to make it manifest. And people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave. Are we together? I shall not die. You are deteriorating. No, no, God forbid. I know that I'm fine. You are going down. You are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares. You finish praying immediately and lie down. The spirit says, he's asleep now. Let's continue. And you get up and say, I didn't see anything. You are joking there. Until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again. There is something called the death of a fool. It is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance. We must embrace the whole counsel of Christ. If you did not prosper by default, then you will not stay healthy by default. You will not stay delivered by default. It has to be engaged through growth. They are stabilizers. They provide the dimensions of your stability. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. You 
must know the truth and know it enough to set you free. Are we blessed? I wrote something down here. Our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways, the principles, the methodologies of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you are in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again your ignorance has been represented in every dimension. And now you stand and wonder, what do I do? You must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word. Listen, if you do not know the ways of God, the primary way that we know God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through the names of God. The third way we know God is through the person of Jesus. Jesus, the Bible calls him the, the, the express image of the invisible God. And the last way we know God is through experience. There are not many other ways. These are the ways allocated. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. It takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life. It says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation. When you know God and encounter him, he will expose you to his ways. It is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your Christian life. Are we together? Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Thank you, Megan. Exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. How do you know? By the mighty act. There is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Please look up. It is not the best of God that believers are challenged. However, it is also not unusual in the economy of God 
that believers are challenged listen very carefully it while it is true that it is not a the best reflection of the zoe life if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life it is the flawlessness the dexterity the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of god however because the treasure is in earthen vessels it is also not unusual please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged God in his dealings with men knew that there will always be room here and there are we together for the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ and so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions, not of a man. Many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um, it says but the Lord this is your advantage Many are the afflictions of an unbeliever, but he will remain there because he does not have the Lord as his anchor. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. The advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the Lord who can deliver him out of them all. Out of them all. So the embarrassment is not the challenge. Listen, believers. Stop allowing challenges to make you feel I'm not a Christian. Maybe it's because I did not pray. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The Bible tells us that many are the afflictions. So it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It says, but the Lord delivered him. So God is a deliverer. He delivers. He delivers him. What is deliverance? I've taught you. Deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits. No. It's the parting away. Separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress. It's called deliverance. The moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress. Be it demonic be it mental, be it physical, in whatever variation and fashion it comes. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire. And while that is happening, rent issues, financial issues, while that is happening, maybe his spiritual life is going down, while that is happening and he sits and feels bad and some ignorant believer comes and says, oh dear, it's just because you don't know God your life. No, no, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you remain there, then you agree with that situation that the victory of Christ is a lie. That means when you find yourself in that situation, the revelation of the fact that the Lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort, um, comfortable. Are we together? Don't find comfort in that situation. You get up and begin to press. The woman with the issue of blood knew. She understood that she was a daughter of Abraham. The one who was took, uh, you know, bound, she did not know. But this one knew. So she could not heal herself, but she was already rehearsing. Oh, Jesus should come around this place. As soon as Jesus came, she knew already. She pressed and touched the helm of his garment. Never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes 
with the life of God, the victorious life. Your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of Christ. But then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the, the reality of the victory of Christ. I love Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something, praying about it, reading about it. There's, there has, if you are at ease when things are not going well, it's a sign that you are not a serious believer. It is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself. But you should sit down and say, look, where do you know that God is moving? where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i have read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i've not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph are we together and so this this gentleman now he knows that this is what the Bible has said about his life that you shall be the head and not the tail he's born again he's believed it but he's becoming the tail almost forever and then he goes to read there has to be something wrong he doesn't know what is wrong but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom. You see that now. He does not know what to do. But one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of God. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, the excellency of your knowing God is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection. That insistence is what the Bible calls faith. It is not the wishing your insistence to see to it i know i don't have a child now no problem i will not kill myself many are the afflictions so there's no embarrassment you can say whatever you want to say ah call me a barren well men are not barren, no. barren woman are we together impotent man whatever you want to call no problem however i've read in my bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother so i will not just conclude and say well god one day no 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 in your quietness you say lord just because i said thank you for my condition does not mean i will keep quiet i'm thanking you because the bible says listen the bible says in everything gives thanks is a law it has nothing to do with results i give thanks out of obedience but i insist out of faith Please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight so that you will walk out of this place enlightened these pockets of gaps and imbalance is why believers continue to mock themselves you insist and your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom did the Bible not say through desire? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. 
as your desire begins to grow there has to be a way we can't be begging in this family my father is a pastor we are still begging my mother is an intercessor we are still begging my brother is a banker he's looking like a, like a, a farmer he's looking like somebody who, who who just packs debt on the road there has to be a way out i don't know the way but i know there is a way you see it now ah. oh, oh, oh. listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no mat listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find the way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God. So a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done. You may be good in your prayer life, but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life. So you must stay and say, thank you Lord for the one I've seen, but show me the one I've not seen. That's why the Bible says meekness. Because you see, let me tell you this. When you have results in one area of your life, usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere. No, you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely. That you are a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous. That you are prosperous does not mean you have character. You have to approach these dimensions per dimension. Until every one of it, and let me tell you this. The more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry continually, I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill in one day. But eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day. But you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school. You will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks. But I came for this miracle service. Thanking you for the one you did March, April. But also admitting that my life is not yet in experience. A reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity 
and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God. Let God be true. Let God be true. And every man a liar. Let God be true. And every condition a liar. Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you. No fortification that comes through knowledge. Hear me, please. Tonight is not a night to be ashamed. Lord, I thank you for this, but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere. Listen, let me tell you. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says, as I hear you declare before my ears, not as you wish, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Are we together now? When you come before God, this is like a threshing floor. When you go to an injection room with the doctor, if they say turn and receive injection, you don't say, ah, doctor. No, 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 no. That's, that's not his business. The doctor is free. You are the one who is in trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Listen to me. If there is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life, don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Psalm thirty four and verse seventeen. Psalm thirty four and verse seventeen. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ.
Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he said. There was a day he said it, but did not do it. There was a day the prophecy was still in motion. Now the time came. When what God said, he now did. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. And Sarah conceived. This is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday lord visit me tonight lift your voice and cry for a visitation visit my church visit my ministry visit my finances visit my spiritual life if someone pray And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me. But this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty. My people need to go. But if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure. Tell delay. Tell defeat. Tell Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. 
the moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Kabaritata. Shaliz Kabaru Zepediakata. Pray unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O oh God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. listen please listen to me I want you to be very sensitive the spirit of faith is strong in this place please listen we'll be very fast tonight the real revelation is what you have received now the prayer the miracles and this is something that just comes in one sweep this is the sustaining factor you will marvel and wonder what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please I want you to listen there is a God that doeth wonders and God can arise you see the thing with God is it is the process that takes time when the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests and you think God will answer them moving one by one. Just one pronunciation and that's the end of it. It's gone. So we're going to be very, very fast. I, I sensed, please listen very carefully. I'm going to pray for people, but I sensed that one of the, the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing you see every time you see death death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting God that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two I will continue to pray this until I see it in your life. I truly believe, listen to me, that there is a dimension of favor that the church, not just individuals, must shift into. Otherwise, forget about the ease to serve the purposes of God.
this issue of God today, money tomorrow, God today, argument final is, is, a, is, a, is a demonic thing. You must press for these graces as we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we have come again. You are the God that doeth wonders. The mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going, please listen, we're going to be very fast. I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now. Um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time, listen, take away anxiety, just relax. There is a God who is mighty. He will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bring the lady under the anointing here. The power of God is coming on one lady here. We have to be very fast now. Just here. I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is showing me, I'm in a vision now, and I'm seeing chains, people's feet with chains. And the Lord is saying, this is what has impeded people from making progress. You are moving, but you are not making progress. I'm about to pray for you now. Please, whether you're an usher or not, just help the usher so that we're very fast tonight. I'm seeing chains. I want to pray now. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such a mighty deliverance overflow one just overflow one i'm seeing the power of god come we have to be very fast but i'm praying now you're going to shout that name that is above all names listen this deliverance is not just for you alone some of you came and left your family members for years you are still in the same spot you love god but there is no progress i want to pray for you now at the count of three there's such a strong anointing in the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. I cause those chains now. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. Shake the inside and outside. I decree and declare: be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please, so that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros kabaruda shalakatos kebriandas. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online, this shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families, what looks like a door, under chains, it must live right now. One, 
two, three. I command every chain, the Pahuta Shikabarakata, chain of darkness, dying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I need a chain falling. I need a chains falling. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. Hear me. The Bible says, "Now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit." The same spirit that delivers, that heals, the Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me, there are all kinds of barrenness in this place. Physical barrenness, financial barrenness spiritual barrenness I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost at the count of three right now that anointing is coming on people inside and outside those with physical barrenness issues God is stepping in right now and those with all kinds of related barrenness issues God is also stepping in at the count of three I declare it right now one two Three, let that power touch you right now. Shake I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you. Enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, ma'am. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number Amen. two, God is stepping into your family. Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that Amen. your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray, it will take lives. People will die like chickens. But we're going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder is a grace i declare right now whether you know your state or not i'm seeing that map and i send the word i declare by the spirit let that anointing i'm seeing fire rising call this state shalis kobarakata 
impregnation. I command liberty by the spirit of the living God. I command liberty by the power of the Holy Ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now. Now by the spirit. Mama, please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Ma, and it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus. Let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer. Where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in Miracle Service. There is something called Aleku. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again. Where are you coming from? Where is she from? State. You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. I know you now. I command that devil out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty the lawful captives shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge relative to the grace that confronts it. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Amen. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside, overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. Hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna. Abuja, where do you stay? I stay in a... Where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? A... Yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes, I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen! My dear, this is your daughter? Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady as young as she's seen, God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady, you see. Favor, favor, that's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? 
this lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. No, 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 it's, it's not everybody. I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now. I'm seeing, I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four, one, two, three, four ladies. By the power of, please, why are they, don't, please don't bring people out that have not called, please. Why are they here? Huh? Where is she from? Overflow one. Okay, this is your daughter. Come, Mama. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? We are from Quarter Two, sir. You are from Quarter Two. Quarter Two. Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. There's somebody here. When it's time to pray, please, no matter what overflow you are in, um, I want to pray for you by myself. When they look at you, they will think you are pregnant, like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you man that everything that wants to cut short your life, number one, I come against it in the name of Jesus. And then number two, I'm praying for you. It's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this? Why is she here? Okay, Jennifer. What's wrong with her? Huh? She's not feeling fine. Okay, we'll, we'll pray for the sick. Ah, we have to pray. Oh. Is she mad? She's just not. Okay. It's before that she was mad, but now she's like that. She was mad before. Yes. When uh, it has been now uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to. This means when she's talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We're going to minister to the sick. We have to, if not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me? My dear, how are you? You can hear me? Yes. I will pray for you, eh? And Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. They will just say, survive by. But there is a God in heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. We have to pray. I hope they are not just coming out at random. Do we have... Huh? I didn't ask them to come out. I said, protocol, you, we should be able to work with the people so that we don't have... You are the one? Come. Where are you from? Paladan. Paladan. Yes. Place your hand on your stomach. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, I have done many scans. What did they tell you is there? Nothing. Nothing. And yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant. Are you married? About to, sir. About to marry. Is your husband here? Yes, sir. Husband, come. Where is he? The Lord wants to save a big, major marital problem now. Husband, sir, come. Thank you. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. We love you. God just wants to save you. Very little things like this can tear marriage, not into two, into pieces. And want to want to help them. Where are you coming from, sir? From Samaritan. 
What are you trusting God for? Healings and uh, God provision for the wedding. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is why I'm, I'm saying, I don't know. We're going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first, then. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus. Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus Christ. You, you see how these kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now, watch the power of God. Ah, the power of God. Oh, this let me tell you the anointing is very powerful it's not for showmanship it's like a drug just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not god i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit madam let me tell you the truth you will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time i'm saying this by the spirit of god and this i'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach i lose it right now and I release you, I set you free from this. In the name of Jesus. My friend, I pray for you. Look at me, sir. You believe in Jesus? The budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone, you have not gone near halfway the budget. Eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, Kai. When is the wedding? 12th October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. The prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Surprise this, my dear brother. More than enough for your wedding. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare be healed right now. Be healed completely. In the name of Jesus. Be healed completely. Your name is Jennifer. I'll pray with you. Come. I'll just lay hands on you. All this Jennifer, I'll just lay hands. I'm not getting any. Hold her. Collect the child, please. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, take away this reproach that I see in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. In Jesus' name, please come quickly. In the name of Jesus, come, my dear. May the Lord bless you and honor you. Come. Reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one ushering lady. It's an ushering lady. I'm seeing a mighty deliverance. Reproach is living right now by the Spirit. Whether inside or outside, I'm seeing one ushering lady. The power of God is coming upon her. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that miracle take away reproach in the name of Jesus Christ. Take away reproach. You are Jennifer. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear. My dear, hold her hands, two of you. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Because both of you need the same miracle and God is giving you that miracle he's terminating shame completely from your life there is I'm seeing a man here you are a pastor I know there are many pastors I can presume but who is a pastor here sir please come You are a pastor where, sir? Come again. 
I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't hear you. Let him come. I'm seeing you. You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir. I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you. And then I'm praying for you. You will see the miraculous in a very strange way. You may not lay hands on people like this, but the spoken word, as you are speaking, you will see God begin to honor you and things begin to happen. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus, I release you into these dimensions in the spirit and everything that has been said i command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ the lord is releasing speed now please hear this i want to pray i know that i always pray for this but i'm about to pray right now there is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, sometimes they are going to begin to run by the Spirit. Just run like this, inside or outside. Father, I'm the... Ah, my God. I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God. The grace that brings speed. Ten years in one. 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 By the Spirit of the Living God, I command speed for you. Ten years in one. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare speed. over your life in the mighty name of Jesus I declare it you're not wasting your time you are receiving speed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand just that media stand I'm seeing and it's still the same grace for speed I'm seeing media stand I'm seeing that grace there are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you and I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic the prophetic I will do an impartation by the end of the Sabbath but two ladies and three men a real grace real grace the eyes the eyes to see I quicken that grace quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. Grace. 
please don't think we are wasting our time we are going to pray for the sick my dear come this lady God is visiting your family come and stand here where are your people where do they stay Samaru. in Samaru here let me tell you the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family you believe that let me pray for you father in the name of Jesus Christ see let me teach you something you see the word of God is very powerful believe it believe it don't, don't sit arguing and saying will God touch me will it change my life no God will more than surprise you father in the name of Jesus I'm praying for this lady and I decree and declare The Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow two. Overflow two. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow two. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow two. hallelujah we're going to pray for the sick shortly but i'm seeing wow usually i would not i would not be the person to talk about these things but when god does it uh where we, we serve his purposes i'm seeing a grace for miracle alert this is why i kept quiet because you will be surprised that means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies there was no transaction to have necessitated it now god does not do this to sponsor laziness but it's a prophetic dimension this is what i just saw i declare by the spirit of god father every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name i pray by the spirit of the living god right now in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Come, this man, this. What do you do? A businessman, sir. A businessman. Where? In Dandume, sir. Come again. Dandume, Dandume, Katsina State. Katsina State. Yes. I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. Don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. That, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water. It's only God that brings increase. I want to pray for you. Father, what's your name? Sunday. Naemeka. What's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka. I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing... I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry. But listen now. This doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry, but the call of God has been lingering on your life. And it's time to answer that call. I'm stretching my hands. Lord, I don't know where these people are. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Online, in the main auditorium here, Father, anyone that your call is upon his or her life, 
I'm praying, oh God, confirm that call right now. And let them know that it's not just their imagination. I declare by the anointing and by the Spirit of God, draw them into their various callings, into the various mantles, the trainings, the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the Spirit to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now. But I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. Enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately. Now you know that this is already, it may be symbolic of marriage. But a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it. Father, in the name of Jesus. I don't know who that person is, but I'm praying right now. That anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old, in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God. Come for direction especially geographic direction the Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying they don't know exactly where to be based this is this this sounds funny but the Lord there is an anointing that is coming giving you clear direction in dreams visions prophetic intuitions some of you are saying Lord should I stay should I go should I travel should I stay in the country out of the country i'm praying right now the grace for accurate direction in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you we're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of situations that don't represent the counsel of God we have to pray and trust God we're going to do this very 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 fast I keep seeing something in this front row just these people in front I kept ignoring it but I don't know what I'm seeing I'm seeing something that God is showing me everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was true restoration shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen there is somebody here the Lord is bringing an anointing into your life. You are getting into oil. Listen, listen, I'm serious now. Please listen to what I'm saying. This can be a life and death prayer. You see, this spirit of death that is just sweeping around, killing people like chickens all around. Someone will just say headache and fall down and die. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. And I declare every spirit of kidnapping, whether in Zaria here, Kaduna, that would just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. prayer points were done the dimension of the demonstration of the spirit signs wonders 
miracles the gifts of the spirit i call that dimension whatever dimension is missing in your life i speak to you please hear me especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of jesus christ I pray for everyone who is weary. You are tired. Life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency. And it's as though you are about to give up. It's like the grace to continue is not there. By the Spirit of God, I supply fresh fire for the journey. Every leader here, whether a campus leader, prayer group leader, Bible study leader, church pastor, whatever kind of group I pray for you. The dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups, your fellowship burning, I supply that grace upon you now. We prophesy over Zaria. We speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here, I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify in the name of Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night Thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends you lost valuable relationships in the name of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God I call it back into your life now I call it back into your life now the Lord you are here and you are saying apostle we are late but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus please let's minimize movement this for me I believe truly without exaggeration is the greatest miracle I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle i want to make my ways right with jesus you are here overflow one two three four i want to give you an opportunity in two minutes please run overflow three now you can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time but if you are here overflow one two two b and then online please make your way here quickly let's celebrate them as they come you're saying, Apostle, I want to win that war. My friend, keep stretching your leg carefully, eh? You don't have to... Yes, you, the man with the crutch. Keep coming, quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, 
tonight. If you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my Savior, you are my King, you are my Lord. Tonight, I receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that I reign in this life. From today and forever, I have eternal life. I'm a child of God, forward ever and backward never. Amen. Please keep those hands lifted. Father, we thank you. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Thank you for bringing this one, so God, to make their declaration. We declare according to the authority of Scripture that a new life begins for them tonight, a life of victory, a life of grace. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because they will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Now, there's a gentleman waving his hands at the back. Please, all of you, just follow the gentleman in concert and there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly. Thank you for your patience. Well Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.